how our economy is tracking absolutely matters. Look, in New Zealand, we're roughly projecting 3% um, growth, our unemployment's at 3.9% on traditional measures, budget surpluses. People would look at us and go, you're doing okay. But we have homelessness at mm. staggering rates. Mm. One of the highest rates of youth suicide in the OECD. Our mental health and well-being is not what it should be. So our plan is through the well-being work that we're doing, a living standards framework, and our well-being budget, where if you're a minister, you want to spend money, you have to prove that you are going to improve intergenerational well-being, we are hoping to embed in actually what the public is asking us for, to address the societal well-being of our nation, not just our economic well-being. And did you have the same problem as the US? I mean, GDP went up and up and up, but the disposable household income went down. We've been caught a, during the post-GFC environment, we were called a rock star economy. You know, people look to us as an example, I think, of, a, of an economy that recovered quickly. And yet during that period, some of those statistics were, were exactly that, so, you know, staggering. And not a measure of success, I think, that we would hold ourselves to. The trick for us is not just using well-being and some of the OECD work uh, around different measures of well-being as a scorecard. Because it would be very easy, I think, to, to just say, well, here's some uh, new things that we're going to create data sets around. Instead of just scoring ourselves, how do we embed it in our decision making? And I think that's what New Zealand is doing differently. This year, our wellbeing budget is one example. We're also changing our Public Finance Act to say you must include wellbeing priorities. We've even said, for instance, you now, we now have to report on child poverty numbers every time we deliver a budget. We're fundamentally changing the way that we do policy making uh, to make sure that we deliver on, on well-being, not just uh, economic success. And do you do surveys, your own surveys? We do, we do. Um, uh, for instance, we do our own household income surveys to look at um, material deprivation or, uh, for children um, and households. We, we want to know whether or not you can afford healthy meals, whether or not you're sharing rooms in your home, whether you can afford uh, multiple pairs of shoes, indicators of quality of life. So we do um, uh, do that work. But what, we're, what differentiates us probably from others is what we're doing around our budget. So usually, as you'll know, budgets uh, in the past perhaps looked at uh, simply inputs. You know, how much are we spending on health? Now, over the years, uh, many economies have changed that to be able to communicate that better to the public. So instead of just saying we spend X, you know, millions or billions of dollars, we, that then translated into how many operations are we purchasing and delivering. Yeah. Um, now we're actually starting to say, well, actually, does that necessary, is that a good indicator um, of uh, the health uh, of our people? Uh, so now we are looking at outcomes, not just how much we're spending on health and how many uh, operations, but actually how well are our people? What's their life expectancy likely to be? Um, uh, and uh, when you start looking at things in that so broad you context... So more money into education? Well, actually, no, um, it's not just... And you, you stop looking just at health. So if I'm saying how healthy um, are the New Zealand people uh, and what's contributing to their health, we might then start looking at some things like the work we have out of our longitudinal studies. We, in the 1970s, started... Uh, studying uh, the well-being of our kids from birth right up until their adulthood. And what we learned from that was a child that grows up in poverty is more likely, even when they come out of poverty, to have the health impacts later in life. So if we're looking at how healthy our people are, we're not just then looking at how many surgeries we perform with them. Actually, we then go right back to the beginning and saying, are they a child living in poverty? Because if we don't fix that, our health system picks it up later down the track. So, in practical terms, what does it mean? Well, this budget, any minister who wants to deliver a bid and say, I want to spend some money here, has to show how it will benefit us at an intergenerational level. They also have to work with other ministers. So the Minister of Health might want to work with the Minister of Child Poverty and start delivering uh, interventions that make a difference 30 years down the track. We as politicians aren't going to benefit from some of that intervention. Uh, and so some of the work we're doing now um, will probably will reap the benefits in 20 years' time. But if you start looking at a lens of politics through what we like to use, kindness, empathy, well-being, then actually it doesn't matter what happens just in a political cycle. It matters what happens over decades. But I think the reason we need to start taking this work seriously, and you're right, 
in the early days, yeah, I think it was... a lot of people, there's just this um, fluffy thing yeah. here, what are you it was talking treated about? As, yeah. It was treated as, uh, yeah. as woolly, um, a nice to have, experimental. I think the OECD has really added some heft. Um, but there's another reason I think it needs to be taken seriously. I mean, right here at the World Economic Forum, we've heard, uh, you know, discussion around what's happening to global growth rates, uh, discussion around what's happening to trade, now, those might be conversations we're having separately, but actually, if you distill down what's happening to trade uh, and some, some of our tit-for-tat trade wars, it's become a proxy for dissatisfaction domestically. Some might argue that's what Brexit is. Some might argue some of the other uh, uh, populist uh, uh, rises that we've seen within Europe, that they are proxies for dissatisfaction. Our people are telling us that politics is not delivering and meeting their expectations. Yep. And so this is not woolly, it is critical. This is how we bring meaning and results for the people who vote for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not ideological either. It doesn't have to be something just progressive governments do. I think it is about finally saying, this is how we match expectations and try and build trust back into our institutions again, no matter where we are in the world.